Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Andrew To and I work as a junior analyst in a bank here in Singapore. In this video, I'll go through eight different kinds of jobs that we can get with an economics degree. And if you're doing research at this point before taking on a degree or you're in the middle of studying an economics degree right now, I hope this video helps you. I'll be speaking from my experience as an economics graduate and these are the eight different areas that I wish I knew earlier on on the areas that I can easily find a job in. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first kind of job that we can easily get is a data analyst because in economics we deal a lot with data and we analyze them using uh, statistical software such as data and how to interpret them using some try and tested methods like linear regression and uh, drawing graphs and curves and trying to interpret uh, variables from one and uh, from one to another so this is really useful in the real world because um, many managers today make decisions based on data and there's really a ton of data out there in any business so um, usually there is a need to have a data analyst to crawl through all the data and try to make sense out of it so that we can inform uh, senior executives on what to do. So here are some jobs that I found while doing uh, research for this video and if you're doing your job search and you don't find these roles anymore, don't worry about it because I'm pretty sure it will get updated over time. Uh, new companies would post these new job listings again because these roles are always going to be needed in the jobs market at least for the time being. So the first job that I found that is really relevant for an economics degree is this data analyst. Uh, in a global operation central analytics by Facebook, <laughs> right? It's a very nice tech company, and ooh, I mean, they're like offering between nine to eighteen thousand dollars per month. Uh, I mean, it varies a lot, but basically, if you know, you just look at a job description, right? It says they are looking for someone to um, work with data right analyze data and build dashboards to monitor the data and make sure that uh, the business is fully informed so this job is looking for someone with an economics background and also considers other people from computer science math and statistics um, and if we also look at uh, the programming side of things they also expect uh, people to learn sql and python uh, or, or some data visualization so, uh, tools like tableau well, if you're reading an economics degree at this point or you're considering um, taking up economics as a major, do take note that the degree doesn't have a high focus on SQL and Python and Tableau and these things are probably um, applications that we need to learn on our own or through job experiences. But the next point is going to be super relevant, right? Which is like the experience with statistical analysis, hypothesis, uh, hypothesis testing, you know, probability. All these things are like, I can even name the module behind <laughs> each of this. And, and, and pretty much it's, it's just applying what we learned, right? In school, which is really rare because as I mentioned in my last video, um, there are very, very few jobs in my opinion out there that really uses what you learned in school directly. But this is really one of the few jobs out there that I've seen that really uses some of the real hardcore stuff that we learned. And I can imagine that it's going to be even harder because, you know, when it comes to all these statistical theories, there are generally, you know, assumptions that must be met before a conclusion can be made. And if those assumptions are not met, then you might be making a false conclusion. Like for example, the standard causation versus correlation, you might be making some false conclusions behind that. Just because you've seen two series of data going side by side, moving in tandem, is not always the case. And there is, you know, a lot of background work that goes behind the scenes. And if you don't know already by now, the thing about data analytics is that 80% of the work comes down to cleaning the data, meaning you need to prepare the data and 20% of the work then comes down to the anal and th th then comes down to the analysis of the data. And I saw a picture that illustrates this not long ago. If you think about Lego blocks uh, and you buy a Lego set, you know, what you've seen on the packaging is the completed uh, uh, build of the Lego. And that is like the output of the whole data analysis. But when you open a box, you actually see that you have all these Lego boxes, all, all these Lego blocks in pieces and and, and, and everywhere so that's like data right when, when you get data in this raw form it's like all over the place um, it's not clean you might have some um, variables in there that you need to remove outliers so on and so forth and then you need to arrange them uh, according to the color and stack them accordingly before you can actually create what you see on the box and so if you're looking at this and you're studying economics, pretty much uh, we are already meeting half or at least of the minimum requalification. Uh, it's just that we need to pick up additional programming like SQL and Python. Well, let's look at another similar role, which is uh, Shopee. Right? E-commerce is like booming nowadays and uh, 
Again, there's lots of data in e-commerce because it's a huge operation. Um, millions of people are shopping online nowadays. And you know, if you think about shopping uh, online, there's so many variables that we need to think about. There are so many different products. And if you look at this job description, it's asking for someone who is willing to dive deep into the data to investigate trends, uncover insights, and create meaningful visualizations, right? So that the business can uh, make data-driven decisions. I mean, this is a classic uh, data analyst role. I mean, I, I can imagine there's like tons and tons of um, Excel spreadsheets or, or or databases to look at to really understand what's going on, what's the right thing to do, how do we re increase revenue this quarter, uh, what's selling well and what's not selling well. I mean, the, all these things can actually be answered through data. Again, so this is asking for someone who is very comfortable with working with large data sets and uh, having additional programming knowledge like SQL and Python would be very, very useful. All right, so the second job that we can do as an economist is to be a statistician. And it's actually not very different from the first role, which is a data analyst, uh, except that for as a statistician, we really specialize in analyzing large data sets. So here are some job listings that I found as well from the Department of Statistics. And they actually have a very interesting website called SingStat, where we can find a lot of interesting statistics about a country. Um, and I believe that these data uh, is used for policy making and also released to uh, the general public for uh, research and for general interest. Or we can also join uh, MINDEF, which is like uh, another government body, and uh, they are also looking for data scientists. Generally, uh, data science is really, really hard. Like the real hardcore ones is, is super grounded in uh, theory. And, uh, and, and in my experience, there are not many entry-level roles in this field. Um, but occasionally, once in a while, we may come across entry-level data science roles uh, like this one, where it's actually only just asking for a simple one to two years of work experience, which can be justified with school project work or internships. So this is a pretty good job to look at if we really enjoy going to data and just really want to do so well in it and just want to specialize in this area. And so the third job that we can do is to teach or to become a teacher. And generally teaching is fun, so we can just join a Ministry of Education to teach at a primary school, secondary school, or at a JC. And with economics, because we deal a lot with essay writing, uh, we deal a lot with math as well. So I think we can easily teach um, pretty much any subject um, in, in school, um, except Chinese or Mandarin, because my Chinese sucks, by the way. Um, or the second area that we can teach is also to simply become a professor in economics, right? Um, like we basically just want to follow the tracks of the professors in university who has been uh, who have been teaching us um, the modules. And that means that we need to go for a master's and eventually get a PhD in, in, in economics before or we can become a professor or become a lecturer to uh, teach economics at an undergraduate level. The fourth kind of job that we can do is to become a researcher. And being a researcher is like kind of like being a data analyst, except that you're not doing it for um, in a profit-making company, but you're doing it for public interest, for the good of science, to advance economic interests of society. Now, when we study economics, we would naturally come across journal articles and papers. So being a researcher means that we'll actually be contributing to these research. And that also means that we'll be gathering a lot of data to help professors write their papers. And these jobs are generally found in universities, and so if you want to get an idea of what journal articles look like, uh, you can check out two of the most famous uh, economic journals, um, the Quarterly Journal of Economics and also the Amer American and also the American Economic Review. So in my course of study, I actually came across a lot of interesting papers uh, from these two journal articles. And so do check out the journal articles if you're interested to see how they look like. And if you like them, you can pursue the path of being a researcher. And the fifth kind of job that we can stand out in is to join the banking and finance uh, sector because uh, in economics, we deal a lot with um, how the economy works. We understand how it works. We understand how money works as well. So one of the most immediate uh, applications is in the banking and finance sector. And there are generally two parts uh, that we can think of in this sector. And in the old world, we're talking about banks, uh, insurance companies, uh, asset management, um, stock brokerages. And uh, these are financial companies that have been around for many, many years, um, probably some even 100 years ago. And uh, there's a new world of banking finance and finance, which is like in the fintech sector where we talk about mobile payments, blockchain, um, robot advisors, and, and things like that. And these areas are always hiring and uh, they tend to favor economic graduates. And so in the old world banking and finance, we can simply just think of all the national banks uh, that we can think of and just go to the 
Recurious website. They are always hiring. There are plenty of jobs there. They employ a lot of people. And uh, for fintech, they are also hiring interns. Like for example, Saif uh, is a digital wealth manager and uh, or a robo advisor as well. And you can also see they're hiring interns, which pretty much they are just looking for anyone who has an interest in this sector. And next, we can also join a graduate program and there are plenty of graduate programs year in year out. They are generally more competitive compared to the normal jobs that uh, uh, companies are hiring out there because for graduate programs, they are looking for really smart people um, and people who are sharp and good presenters and know their stuff well. And so I think these programs uh, have very broad requirements because I think in my view, they are pretty much like casting a huge net out there just to catch everyone so that the requirements pretty much fit everyone out there. And they're just really just trying to find the best talent, um, the, the most inspiring kind of uh, young talent that they want to see as the future of the company. So I like to use Google search for these kind of graduate programs because uh, graduate programs are usually located um, on the company website itself. But Google search helps us to look for all of the graduate programs across the internet. Um, so I just simply uh, search for Singapore graduate programs. I can see so many of them on the sidebar here. I think uh, with an economics background, we can still apply for this as long as we have the aptitude and the character to be the next generation in that company. Or if you didn't land a chance in the graduate programs, which I tried and I didn't as well, uh, we can always join a normal role in a normal company or in an MNC as well, like being an associate in operations, which is a general role in a project management setting. And uh, these also have very general requirements too, uh, but pretty much we'll be dealing with a project work basis and it's not a bad job. It's, it's, it's also a good place to learn people skills, uh, learn how to organize stuff and, and run projects in general. For example, we can see uh, Grab is like hiring uh, someone in the operations department. And as we can see in the day to day, it's pretty much uh, uh, a job that anyone can do. Uh, but to do it well is of course a different level, right? Um, and the requirements are also quite general. So again, this is something that we can do uh, with a general degree like economics. We can consider joining the public sector to serve the best of society. In uh, economics, we generally talk about maximizing societal benefits. So what better way is there than to join the Internal Revenue Authority of Singapore, which is like the tax collector uh, body and uh, taxes help the government to run the country well. And so again, we can see the requirements are quite general. So if you care about maximizing societal benefit, uh, you can consider joining the public sector. And if I can have just one advice, it would be to specialize in one area. Because as I look back at all these eight different areas, it really takes a long time to build up in each of them. I would, if you think about data science or if you think about um, management skills or we think about public speaking skills, these things really take a long time to build up. And four years or three to four years in a degree uh, while studying in a, a degree is not a very short time, but it's not very long either. So I wish that I had uh, specialized in one area, which is like I really spent at least 80% of my effort just to fine tune my craft in that area. If you already know what you want to do, but if you don't, it's okay because there are still general roles and jobs out there that we as economic graduates can fit in easily. So if you found this video helpful, let me know in the comments below. Um, let me know as well what other questions you have and I hope to see you in my next video.